assalamu alaikum students uh, welcome to the next topic that we are going to cover for this course uh, the next topic that we intend to cover is phylogenetics but before moving on to phylogenetics uh, i would like to talk a bit about evolution i know you guys are going to study a full course of evolution in your next semester but I'll, I'll just want to give you a brief overview uh, about this topic and uh, this will help you understand why phylogenetics is useful why is it important and how powerful tool it is uh, in biological sciences So the planet Earth is inhabited by millions of different species. Uh, according to an estimate, there are approximately 300,000 species of beetles alone. We have 17,000 species of butterflies. We have insects and approximately 300,000 species of plants. We have algae. We have other mammals, uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa. So there are a lot number of uh, you know different species living in this planet and although they are all different from each other yet there is some commonality among these species the basic uh, or you can say the blueprint of life is the same and that is the cellular life has a double stranded dna genome uh, most of the approximately all 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 life forms on this planet they have a double stranded dna as its genome except for some viruses that has uh, rna a genome most of the species they have uh, a DNA genome then this all the cells they are enclosed by lipid membranes although you know that plant cells and animals uh, sorry plants and bacterial cells they have an additional protection of cell wall but the protoplasm is uh, immediately protected by lipid membranes then we have a genetic code that is nearly universal among all the species the genetic code is almost you know is universal then in your biochemistry class you might have studied if you remember that amino acids they can occur in both l and d forms but the cells they only use l-shaped amino acids uh, l-shaped amino acids okay so this is why uh, a very famous uh, evolutionary biologist Dobzhansky in 1973 you know said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution so uh, many people they are you know uh, studying diversity of life they are trying to you know uh, understand how evolution takes place what's the mechanism behind evolution and among those scientists uh, I would uh, talk about dr. Peter Grant and dr. Rosemary Grant in today's lecture Dr. Peter and Dr. Rosemary Grant, uh, their husband and wife, and they have been studying evolution of Darwin's finches uh, for over four decades now. Uh, I'm I'm sure you are uh, you are going to study about Darwin's finches in detail in your course of evolution in the next semester. But they started their work in 1980s, early 1980s. They went to Galapagos archipelago. Uh, to study Darwin's finches and they stayed there for almost like 40 years so in today's lecture I'm going to discuss a paper that was published in the journal science in 2017 by dr. Peter and Rosemary Grant and the title of the paper was rapid hybrid speciation in Darwin's finches so I'll just uh, discuss with you a part of that paper uh, in today's lecture so in this study, Dr. Peter and Dr. Rosemary, they uh, gave a direct, you know, observation uh, from origin to reproductive isolation of a new bird species. Uh, they have showed that interbreeding of two species may result in the formation of a new species, uh, which is rare. This event is very rare in nature, but here they have, you know, uh, showed that interbreeding of two species they can result into a formation of a new species and how did they achieve this task basically they tagged each and every bird in that island uh, they know which bird reproduced how many times how many offspring did it reproduce in each and everything 
and uh, the third main thing that is uh, you know discussed in, in this paper is that the reproductive isolation which typically develops over hundreds of generation it can you know be established in only three generations so it can be pretty fast people they generally think that evolution is a very slow process it takes millions of years for evolution to take place but in actual uh, life it's a pretty it can be a pretty fast uh, process like in this case in 1981 they uh, you know observed a new bird species in the island and they followed that bird species and uh, in their lifetime that bird basically uh, became an independent species a new species uh, if you go to google maps and type in galapagos you will see a collection of different islands a uh, collection of different islands is basically uh, known as archipelago so galapagos is an archipelago which is located west of ecuador about uh, 300 kilometers west of ecuador which is in the south america so in this uh, picture you can see that galapagos archipelago is located here and if you zoom in uh, you you will find this uh, collection of islands you will see uh, you know there are different islands present at you know uh, some distance to each other and each island is different from another island in terms of its terrain and in terms of in terms of its vegetation so the bird species living in one island depends upon the food that is present on that island okay for example uh, these are four different species of uh, finches there the cactus finch uh, it feeds on you know cactus and flowers it has a pointy beak which can be you know uh, used uh, easily by the bird to um, get the food from cactus and flowers then we have small ground finches we have medium ground finches and then we have large ground finches these ground finches they basically feed on the seeds so small ground finches uh, they feed on you know smaller delicate seeds which they can you know easily uh, chew and you know uh, eat it the large uh, ground finches they their beak is different uh, because the food that they are going to eat is the hard seeds so their beak helps them to open up the hard seeds which small uh, ground finches they cannot do okay so uh, the vegetation or the type of food present in one island um, you know decides uh, which uh, bird species will be uh, living there so coming back to the this galapagos archipelago i told you before that dr peter and rosemary they were you know observing and they were uh, studying darwin's finches on one of the island which is known as daphne major and this is the daphne major a small island and in that sm uh, small island the predominant species of bird there is geospisa fortis or you can also say that it's a ground finch ground finch as, as as i told you before feeds on the uh, on seeds available there okay so in 1981 they observed that a bird which resembled geospisa fortis but it did not you know breed uh, did breeding with the resident species it was behaving as an independent species there Uh, which they named as a uh, uh, big bird okay so this bird was observed in daphne major and dr peter and dr rosemary grant they observed this bird and followed it for you know different generations for like 40 years they followed this bird and initially they thought that the big bird species the new species was basically the hybrid of geospisa fortis which is inhabited uh, which is you know present in the daphne major and geospisa scandens which is present in the 
neighboring island known as Santa Cruz. As you can see, Geospecies scandens it has a pointy beak, so it's basically a cactus finch. It feeds on cactus and its flowers. Okay, so Fortis is a ground finch. It feeds on nuts, and scandens is has a pointy beak it feeds on you know cactus and flowers okay so initially they thought that big bird or the new bird was basically a hybrid of fortis and scandens which is understandable because daphne major island and santa cruz island they are very close to each other if i'm not wrong they are you know just uh, approximately five kilometers apart so it's very easy for a bird to fly into the other island and stay there so the question was what was the actual origin of the founder bird initially they uh, thought that the new bird or the big bird was basically a hybrid of fortis and scandens because uh, these two birds they live in the neighboring island and it's very easy for one bird to fly to another island and you know breed there and then became an independent or distinct species but they had to make sure Another question, which strictly speaking is not the scope of this study, but for the sake of understanding phylogenetics, uh, I have added these questions here. And that is about the ancestor uh, bird. So the question is, if this is the mainland, so and this is the archipelago, okay? And this is the archipelago. So what happened initially? Was this the case that a single bird, you know, flew to one of the island and then from there it got distributed to different islands and because of the speciation event or whatever, okay? And the other, question, other possibility could be that one bird, it flew from the mainland, I mean not one bird, different birds they flew from the mainland and they got you know uh, they ended up into different islands they stayed there and became different species this could be another question okay so in the next time we'll try to see how did they answer these uh, questions uh, that are related to evolution so the one word to answer those questions they use the technique known as phylogenetics in the case of this new uh, bird species which is known as big bird as i told you before that you know geos Geo geospisa fortis uh, resided on the daphne major island geospisa scandens it resided on the santa cruz island and initially they thought that the big bird is the hybrid of fortis and scandens but when they did the phylogenetic analysis they found some uh, a very interesting you know observation that is the founder bird okay the founder bird was more closely related to geospisa conirostris but it was not it was distinctly related with geospisa scandens okay now where is this Geospisa conirostris? This bird species resides on an island which is approximately 100 km from Daphne Major. And it's very rare for bird to travel that long. Uh, I mean, uh, travel 100 km from one island to another island, keeping in view that another big island came into its way. But they, uh, this founder bird it started its journey from uh, Espinola Island okay this one Espinola it started its journey from here ended up in Daphne Major the bird you know breded with the resident Geospisa Fortis and after one generation or two generation this big bird it breded endogamously okay and then it behaved as a different species now why did they behave as different species because this big bird has a distinct song you know that uh, the birds 
when uh, when when uh, when they are trying to impress a female or when they want to you know breed so they have their distinct song which they the, the birds they sing their song and to attract the opposite gender okay so this big bird has a distinct song so geospisa fortis the resident species of taffany major island uh, they did not you know responded to the song of big bird okay so that's how the big bird behaved as an independent species there and became uh, you know a distinct species as for the second question about the origin of uh, these bird species when they did phylogenetic analysis of different species living in different islands they found out that all the species living in those islands they were closely related to each other as compared to the mainland finch like these these all uh, uh, finches they were distinctly related to uh, mainland finch so this means or this gives an idea that a bird species it flew from mainland island mainland to one of the island of galapagos and from here they moved to different islands okay and there according to uh, the food source available they you know uh, adjusted themselves according to the conditions there and became distinct species so uh, i hope uh, with these two examples uh, you can understand you have understood uh, how powerful this tool is uh, how this tool can be so useful in studying evolution and biological questions in the next lecture inshallah we are going to uh, talk about phylogenetics how the tree is made what are the different you know uh, different types of trees uh, technical terms involved okay so we are going to discuss those um, things in the next lecture uh, if you have any question about uh, today's topic we are going to discuss it in the uh, online question answer sessions uh, allah hafiz